Greetings, my sisters, my goddesses, family, friends, and, and loved ones. It feels like it's been a while since I've connected with all of you. Um, but this is some weekend to uh, reconnect. Uh, as most of you who will be watching this are aware of my uh, beloved father-in-law, Pops, passed on June 14th. And uh, for the last 10 to 12 days, we were pretty well enmeshed in that. Um, we know he's at peace, he's in a good place, and again, I thank all of you for your prayers and best wishes, because his passing was very peaceful, it was very sacred. So with that being said, I thought this would be a great weekend, new moon, solar eclipse, summer solstice, and Father's Day tomorrow. Um, as I had originally planned June 20th to be the Lemurian Sisterhood Gathering, obviously those plans were changed. So here I am, reaching out to you from my heart with a, a hopefully inspiring message uh, this incredible weekend. This Father's Day weekend is actually a mother of a weekend. And by that I mean this new moon, the solar eclipse, takes place under the Great Mother which is the sun sign of Cancer, whose ruling planet is the moon. The rise and awakening of the feminine force of fierce love is a hallmark of our times. As I read, since 2018, there has been the series of eclipses in Cancer, and this last solar eclipse in Cancer will take place today. Plus, this is sandwiched between the lunar eclipses on June 5th and our upcoming July 4th, the birth of our nation, which uh, United States of America, the birthday, takes place under the sun sign of Cancer again. With our beloved moon obscuring the sun, the lunar theme is primarily about family, ancestors, roots, and history. The solar eclipse will create a ring of fire, which coincides with solstice, where the longest day will be here today up in the northern hemisphere and for those in the summer hemisphere the shortest day all this followed by father's day tomorrow as we have been experiencing in 2020 this weekend is most assuredly following suit of unprecedented times events however with the great mother and center stage let us remember incredible things are born from chaos the Divine Feminine is arising from a long slumber, and we are experiencing the birth pains of a new world. Let us get back to our roots, connecting with our ancestors who want to assist and guide us through these amazing, challenging times, especially the ones who have overcome great challenges in the past. Most especially, call on those strong feminine ancestors. Then go within and search self for your own deep wisdom. Stay strongly connected to our beloved Earth Mother, Pachamama. Remember, you are the bridge between the Earth and the Divine. You are co-creating with the Universe. Stay connected to the Galactic Heart, Star Mothers, as well as following your own heart promptings. The entrance of COVID-19 has brought the human race back home, if you will. With quarantine in place, we were literally home where many could be more intimate and connected. Look at all the public figures such as our teachers, co-workers, and famous ones such as many artists, politicians, late night hosts, all joining us from their home with kids and pets in view. As this happened under the sun sign of Gemini, the sign of everyday people, this humanized both power and celebrity alike. Another feminine quality we have witnessed is the tsunami of gratitude shown to those human family members, such as the nurses, uh, delivery people, essential workers who went out daily into the trenches ensuring our needs were met, such as feeding, cleaning, comforting, and so many of, of these 
to make our lives seem normal. Now these same people, underappreciated in the past, have risen to new heroic status. In our forced isolation, the values of the Divine Feminine created far greater unity, compassion, kindness, appreciation. As the slogan, we are all in this together, has, is and has been and will continue to be the mantra of the day. Additionally, being home meant more of us spent time out in our garden, or created one, like George and I, uh, making needed home repairs, uh, baking once again, and in truth, many families began sharing meals and conversations once again. Suddenly, we have more time to stop and smell the roses, if you will, bringing greater joy and beauty to our lives, thus greater clarity and more time for self-care, as well as seeing truths. Many more began to see things that they did not have time to see before, inequalities, abuses. Suddenly, the people became aware of the inequities and a mass outbreak of empathy has and continues to take place. Again, the qualities of the Great Mother who loves and cares for all her children. Most definitely, our beloved Earth Mother and the elements also receive tremendous benefits during this quarantine. Our oceans, the rivers, the land and air. They began to rebound, as did members of the animal species. I like to share just a little more facts about that uh, to an author I appreciate, April Kent Elliott. She wrote, four weeks after our quarantine, the River Ganges, perhaps the world's most sacred yet worst polluted river, was running clean and clear all the way from the Himalayas to Calcutta. Major cities around the world like Los Angeles, New Delhi, London, Seoul, and Beijing have seen their bluest skies in years. The ocean has rebounded. Without the waste and noise of our vessels, sea life is thriving. On tourist free beaches, endangered turtles and crabs are breeding again. We can make a difference. When we slow down, enter the moment, and open our hearts, look what we can do together. Bottom line is that in bringing the Great Mother energies back into the collective, as well as individual, we are beginning to regain balance, harmony, throughout. And as much as the masculine is about logic, force, and power, which is necessary, it is glaringly apparent to the collective that the divine feminine qualities such as feelings, intuition, which open and soften one's heart, must be integrated with the masculine to bring about true balance, harmony, and peace, both within and without. I have some simple but powerful exercises I would like to share with you this new moon, solstice, and lunar eclipse. Each one has its individual message uh, and healing process. And I, I hope that as we do this together, those that feel called to, that we bring about together the desired clarity, love, harmony, balance and peace within. And thus, as within, so without, as the saying goes, then we bring that to others as well. These are the cards, uh, the oracle cards with healing exercises I pulled for this powerful weekend. Uh, they are from the oracle deck, Earth Warrior by Alana Fairchild. And as always, I was told to pick four, and I'll share each one. Uh, four is a number for Earth, the four directions. Um, four is a number of foundation good beginning, organization, just felt right. So as I go to begin to share that with you, I'm going to ask you to just begin breathing. Let's take four breaths. 
and hold it for four counts. And we'll do it four times. How's that? All right, let's inhale for the count of four. Exhale for four. Again. Exhale. Third time. Exhale. And last time. And exhale. The first card that I pulled, which all of them are amazing, is called Mayu. And it is Soma from the Galactic Heart. And I'd just like you to take a, a, a good look at that beautiful card. That is the Divine Galactic Mother and her heart, the Milky Way. And as you can see, I also have the first card of the Star Mother's cards that Amber Wolf uh, Meliha was inspired to co-create. It reminded me of the solstice, the golden energies, and the divine feminine rising from the earth, but it also looked very similar to the universal energies of the Galactic Mother. The brief message, the Divine Mother's milk of the galaxy is feeding your soul. Expansion of your horizons, your spiritual purpose, and your sacred responsibilities is taking place. Divine potential within you is awakening at a higher turn of the creative spiral of consciousness. This oracle is prophecy of ascension and grace, which is exactly what's taking place. And we'll begin with the healing exercise. The next card I pulled, number 17, Padme Sundari, which is out of darkness, the light is born. And that's such a beautiful picture. I love the rainbow energies, her heart. She's holding the lotuses in each hand while the other one is open to receive and the other one is out giving, receiving and giving. That's what it's all about. And I just love this. I love you just to gaze at the card a little bit. I'll read the message as you look at this. The light is powerful enough to survive exposure to the darker side of humanity and remain pure, empowered, and effective. Trust in your spiritual purpose as a light in this world. Trust particularly in your ability to bring purity, order, grace, and light to disorder, chaos, and destruction. The divine is ever by your side and ever within your heart assisting you with this higher purpose in all ways. And we'll begin our healing process. The next card, which was so appropriate for these times, especially with the summer solstice, which is the sun, which is connected to the masculine, and Father's Day tomorrow. I pulled card 22 called in Goyama, honor of the ancient king. And as you look at that lion, it almost looks like, like a ring of fire surrounds his face along the phases of the moon, and then the symbol, the circle, and the triangle in the center of his third eye. The message, the ancient king of the Zulu brings you an empowering message. You are destined to know and experience what it is to be truly empowered. Your voice, your courage, your wisdom, and your dignity can create considerable spiritual light, uplifting and inspiring others, guiding them from a place of spiritual truth towards the fulfillment of their own divine potential. If you have been doubting yourself 
or feelings unworthy of the boldness of your visions, you must allow your spirit to roar, for you shall conquer all obstacles and succeed in your heart's desires. And this is so appropriate for a number of reasons, the obvious, the solstice, and Father's Day tomorrow, but even more so for within. Because in order to have true peace, harmony, love, and abundance, we must balance both the masculine and the feminine within. This card inspires one to raise their own masculine to the sacred masculine, which is discernment, wisdom, guided action and that's what we must do because when the sacred masculine is balanced and integrated with the divine feminine the divine feminine within can flourish she guides the sacred masculine with her intuition and her own wisdom and love and that is taking place within each of us and so it is and now the healing exercise And now the last card that I drew for us, which I think is so appropriate, is also her, her last card in the deck. And it is number 44, which is the number, I pulled two master numbers, 22 and now 44. 22 is about building, um, and 44 is about mastery, the ascended masters, angelic. And it is white buffalo woman was one of my favorites. Beautiful picture. And if you can see, it is a beautiful white rare buffalo in the center of her heart. The buffalo sacrifices itself completely for the survival of the tribe. Hopeful heart, see her sign. Her message, have hope, for you are pure of heart, and white buffalo woman appears as the divine sign of rebirth and harmony. She is the way shower who lives as one with great spirit. She teaches the practices that will free and empower us all. She heralds the birth of the divine upon a new earth. You are held in her heart, and you will recognize her beautiful grace of spirit in your own. I thought these were so prophetic and so appropriate, these four cards. And we'll begin our beautiful healing exercise with a great white buffalo woman. And of course, there was no way that I could greet you all with this message without our beloved dragons being heard. And so with my wonderful dragon book and oracle cards from Diane Cooper, Diana Cooper, they told me to just pick one because it would be one very, very special message. And of all the cards in the deck, I pull the Rainbow Dragon, which I find so prophetic. If you look at it, the, crowd, the clouds are dispersing and the sun is rising in full power with the dragon and the rainbows, the sacred flames. So powerful. And I am going to read the full message. Rainbow Dragon brings the leap of joy that opens new doors. Have trust. Rediscover wisdom. Expect miracles. Accept opportunities. The full message. A rainbow in the sky is a cosmic gift. If our heart leaps with joy and gratitude when we see one, the universe opens new doors for us. Glorious rainbow dragons carry the same promise. When they come to us, a multicolored mystical flame ignites within us. This automatically attracts something of significance from the universe towards us. In addition, rainbow dragons will take us to the mystical pot of gold that is said to await us at the end of the rainbow. This golden gift is our own ancient wisdom, which has been waiting for us to rediscover it. With it, we know how to take knowledge and use it for the highest good of all. We become a wise one, a mage, and the rainbow dragons open the petals of our crown to connect us with universal knowledge, the I Am. And as we use knowledge wisely, more comes to us. The guidance in this card, this is a card of hope, 
prayers, expectation, and gratitude. Look for opportunities. Expect miracles. When new openings occur, seize them. Sometimes you may hardly dare to believe that good fortune has sought you out, so make sure you accept it consciously and unconsciously. Do not let it slip away. Remember to thank the Rainbow Dragon who has come to you for opening new doors for you. Ride with the current of life this dragon has brought you and enjoy everything that comes your way. A Rainbow Dragon may feel like an illusion, but it is very real. If you catch the flash of rainbow colors out of the corner of your eye, it is your rainbow dragon reminding you that the time for a new life is now. Trust that it will happen for you. What a glorious message. And me and rainbows, I just thought it could not be better. With this incredible weekend and the incredible energies, yes, challenges, but we are more than ready. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We will do this together. i like to close my, my message of love, this solstice, solar eclipse, new moon, and Father's Day. I want to quote a very dear friend, who Melissa Stratton, who is an astrologer, a counselor, and a wonderful intuitive. At the personal level, the solstice energies encourage you to continue exploring the deeper revelations you've gained during the months of pandemic restrictions and make stronger your bond of love with family and friends, too. You have helped to recognize your tribe of like-minded people and also to expand further to realize that your tribe is the whole human family. There is strong energy urging you to move beyond old limiting structures and to leave hatred and violence behind and embrace love one another as a plan of action for life. And quoting another Cancerian born, Nelson Mandela, who said, our human compassion binds us, the one to the other, not in pity or patronizingly, but as human beings who have learnt how to turn our common suffering into hope for the future. I hope this message does empower, does inspire, uh, certainly convey my love and appreciation and for all of you and that I do feel we are all together. We are one heart, one voice, one breath, one mind. We are one and together we are victorious. Again, many blessings this incredible weekend. I love you. Thank you. Namaste.